Okay, hi there, welcome to another in our series of key application context videos. Short videos looking at key economic indicators to help you get, get some context for your economics papers. The examiners really do want you to use the extract data and your own knowledge when asked to showcase your knowledge of economics. Let's have a think about government debt. Well, government debt, or the national debt, is the total accumulated government debt uh, issued that's yet to be repaid. So it's a stock of debt, and it can be measured in either in absolute terms. UK government debt, for example, is now over £2 trillion. Pounds, or, and I think this is a better guide to the scale of a debt, we look at it as a percentage of a nation's annual GDP. Now, uh, two countries where national debt is really high. Uh, first of all, Japan, where government debt is 266% of the annual GDP, and Greece, where the debt is closing in on 300% of their national income. In the UK, we have a £2 trillion debt. That's around 95% of GDP. It's gone up by about 10% over the last few years. Obviously, the pandemic caused a fall in GDP and a huge rise in government borrowing. It's about 95% of GDP, certainly well, well above what it was 20 years ago. And Japan has one of the highest government debts in the world. Now, in theory, this might be seen as a structural economic problem because the Japanese government must pay lots of interest on the debt each year. We call that the debt service burden. But worth bearing in mind in terms of evaluation that most of Japanese government debt is actually issued in their own currency. Uh, for example, a lot of African countries are now issuing debt in euros, which is slightly risky. So Japanese government debt is issued in yen. And critically, it's also owed to domestic residents, households, Japanese corporations, Japanese insurance companies, and so on. So therefore, the majority of interest payments from the government uh, therefore stay within the Japanese circular flow. And the yield on debt is also low. So it's perfectly possible to have a high level of debt. But the key question really is, well, what's the interest rate on that debt? And as of April 2022, the 10-year bond yield for Japan was just 0.25%. In other words, the government could borrow money for 10 years at a nominal interest rate of 0.25%. That's very low. Uh, low borrowing costs help to make a higher national debt more sustainable from a sort of fiscal point of view. Quantitative easing, or QE, has also helped to keep bond yields low in Japan, with the Bank of Japan acting as a major buyer of government debt and therefore keeping the bond prices high and the bond yields low. However, uh, with the size of the Japanese working population declining, the, dem the, the demography is working against Japan. It's one, one, one of the oldest populations in the world. Over the long term, the burden of paying back the debt through interest payments for debt financed government spending will probably be borne by future generations of taxpayers. And there is a, there is a kind of looming crisis there for Japan in terms of the fact that Japan must eventually face up to this sooner rather than later. So Japan and Greece have high government debt. But what about countries where debt is much lower? Well, I've chosen three countries for you. Estonia pictured. I can see there the beautiful architecture of the Rotterman district in Tallinn, the capital of Estonia. In Estonia, government debt is 18% of GDP. Well, go back before the pandemic, it was actually less than 10%. So it's increased, it's nearly doubled, but it's still a very low share of GDP. And two of the good examples for your notes, in Australia, government debt is 25% of GDP. And in New Zealand, it's 30% of national income, one third of the level or the scale of debt of the UK. Well, thinking about Estonia, uh, one of the Baltic states, the size of the national debt is low, uh, but this doubled during the pandemic. But having that low debt, in theory, gives these countries plenty of scope to use expansionary fiscal policy when the economy suffers an external shock. And that's exactly what happened in Estonia uh, when the pandemic hit. The UK, uh, Pando uh, the Estonian government pardon me, was able to use expansionary fiscal policy, including wage subsidies and uh, the debt moratoriums on, on businesses in order to uh, absorb the shock effects of the pandemic. But perhaps public sector debt, the national debt in some, some countries can be too low. Oftentimes, for example, uh, countries they need to borrow to invest now, Estonia has become a successful member of the European Union, 
but it does face numerous economic uh, uh, and uh, social challenges. It's got a very uh, aging population, it's got high income inequality and very low energy efficiency. All of these three things might well be addressed by government buying and fiscal policy programmes at some point in the future. So there we go, uh, some application context. Hopefully you find that useful on government debt. Stay happy, stay curious, please. Stay focused and hopefully see you sometime soon.